Time to use the old Exacto again. Hey class, Mr. G here. Today we're going over another project. Today's project is about a shadow box paper cut design. Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G here. Today's project is a shadow box paper cut design. Now, first off, I'm a big fan of Harry Potter. So up front, that's why it's Harry Potter, because I enjoy it. So today's project is dealing with perspective, space, line, and a little bit of texture, because we got that in there as well. All these elements combine together to make a really funky and cool piece. Now, I'll be up front and honest, I did not come up with this idea on my own. I troll Pinterest and Instagram and Facebook and try and find ideas all the time. Find something I like, I'm gonna recreate it and then bring that project to you guys as well so that we can make something cool together and then use this for either class or for our own enjoyment because hey, making art's just fun. So this project here, let's dive into how I went about doing it. First off, let's go ahead and go over some of our materials that we're using today. Now for me, you gotta draw this thing out first. So make sure that you guys have your sketchbook. After you got a sketchbook, you're definitely gonna need Need an exacto knife now before we start using this remember this is a very sharp blade you will cut yourself if you're not careful so first off one make sure this is a new blade you don't want to use an old blade because the older blades are sometimes they'll slip they will not cut as properly they won't be as sharp and you'll it, one it'll mess up the cut two it could slip and cut you and that's a bad hazardous thing so make sure you're cautious after that, the materials that I'm using today is mat board. I've got some extra mat board. If you have a framing person, uh, framing coming that's close by and you can call them up and say, hey, can I have your scraps? Most of the time, they're usually really good, especially for my teacher friends. You tell them that you're a teacher and you need the scraps donated so you guys can use them in class. They are more than happy to usually give those things up for free. So all you gotta do is go and pick it up. I have a company that's around the corner that I use to kind of supply three or four schools because they have a lot of scrap and they are happy to send it my way and I pass it out to all the other teachers. It's a great community thing. So hit somebody up to see if they've got it before you go out and buy it. Now, if you don't have the mat board, cardboard works just fine. I do recommend using cereal boxes just because the cereal box cardboard is a lot closer to mat board than let's say an Amazon box. Now an Amazon box will work. It's just going to be, have that, um, it's corrugated cardboard. It's got that wavy stuff on in the middle. So it doesn't work nearly as, as efficient. Now let's dive into the design application. So in your sketchbook, find an image that has a simple perspective to it. Now I have another video that goes over perspective. Check that out. For the perspective, you want to have something that shows two or three elements of a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. And then you have a, a portion of interest. Uh, so your point of emphasis inside of your in image, that point of interest that people are, that you want that viewer's eye to be drawn into. For me, it's the castle, uh, but also the HP that's in the corner down there. Those are two points that I want people to notice. So I want to make sure those are highlighted. Now, once you have this drawn out, the easiest way that I found to do it was to trace the design out by cutting out the sections in my in my sketch. So I took my sketch and I took pieces of mat board, traced them out to be the exact same size as the sketch, laid the design on top of it, so then I could just trace the design as I'm cutting the sections out. So once I have the design in there, I'm gonna start the very furthest back section, I'm gonna trace that out first. Now, once I've traced that portion out, that's gonna give me my final cell before the backdrop of what the image is gonna look like. And I'm just gonna repeat that process going up all the way until the foreground at the very front. I'm working in a reverse image design. Just makes things a little more fluid in the whole design process. Now, once you have your individual cells illustrated out, lay them out in a night in a row. You kind of want to see a progression of the story. So you see the things that are closest to the foreground, things closest to you in the foreground there are going to be the first things that you're going to cut out. And it should be the largest empty space in the overall image. The thing that is on cell seven, eight, however many cells you're doing, the last cell before the backdrop should have the most amount of should have the least amount of empty space in it. Now, this might not be necessity. Uh, this might not necessarily be the way that yours is, but as it goes back in the distance, you want to see more space left behind because we're going to have things blocking a lot of that space. So you're not going to see everything, and because you're not going to see everything, then you want to ensure that you are making sure that all that stuff that's co that's connected through there has a, has plenty of things to be seen as you're cutting things out. So once you've got your cells in there, I'm using a nice sharp exacto blade. I'm cutting out the individual items of each of those cells. So as I start to stack them up, I can start to see the image starting to 
take shape. Now, as I'm doing this, I do want to check every single cell. Why? Because I might want to fine tune something in there. You have that exacto blade now uh, to where you're doing the cut portion. Get all your cutting done at one time. It's kind of like doing all your prep work before you start cooking. Makes the process a lot easier. Now, finally, once you've gotten, once I've gotten all those pieces cut out, then I'm going to go ahead and start thinking about how am I going to start finishing this off, doing a paint design, doing a background coloring. What am I going to do? For me, spray paint. Why? Because it's spray paint. It's just fun. And it's, for me, it's just a lot easier and it, it was a lot quicker to do. Now, I will say this. One caveat that I did not add to my design that was in the original was the silhouettes of the three main characters, Harry, Ron, and Hermione. I did not add those into mine just because the way that we were talking about uh, the project, I wanted to focus on the perspective of the landscape. I didn't really want to focus on a single centralized character. I uh, did have some students who did want to do that. One of my uh, students, he's a huge manga fan. The one, I think, is the... the the, I'll look it up. He did a fantastic piece. It came out, it looked great. The only issue that I had with his was it didn't space out enough as we were working through the, um, through the final construction portion, but the design was exceptional. Proper, good, proper cuts, nice, well-defined item, items in each of the images. It was a good, full functioning design. Once we're in that paint phase there, and I'm starting to spray paint the designs in there the background design i thought it needed something extra not just a blue sky or, or a dark night sky with some stars into it i want to add the moon in there for this i took a couple cans of spray paint layered a couple different colors together took a piece of ma of magazine paper to pull out some of the paint and create more of those like the pot marks of the moon the craters on the moon I covered that with a round, spray painted the, the rest of the background in, and then trying to just finish it off. Uh, the black, I started to think that a good shadow effect on the moon would look good, but then as I'm making those lines, I realized that's also going to be where the castle sits. So that castle is now going to have another cast shadow added to it, it through the background. Just figured that'd be a nice final piece. And then that brings us to the final. Uh, having the whole piece put together, having the nice... Uh, structure, everything kind of glued in there, having all the different pieces added in there. Uh, one thing that I, you saw me add in the video, added those spacers. What I did is just had extra mat board, cut strips out of it, use the risers around the rim of each of the pieces uh, so that I don't have to make a frame for mine because it already has a frame. You can put a uh, little clip in the back so that it can hang onto a wall, works just fine. Uh, but this is something simple to do for grades. I don't know. You probably get down to about third grade all the way up to 12th grade senior in high school. Now with my own class, I do incorporate a social media component with my stuff. I have my students make their pieces and then after they make the pieces and I've taken several pictures during the process, then upload those to all your favorite social media places. Try and get that portfolio built in a digital landscape. You want people to be encouraged to see your work, get your work out there, get your messages out there and make a lot of good production pieces. As always, let's go ahead and wrap up class like we always do. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share on the on the on all the various platforms so that we can make sure we get the message out there to as many people as possible. If you guys had a question, comment, or concern during today's class, raise your hands down in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions from my classmates. As always, I'll see you guys next class. Until then, go make some art. Later, guys.